Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Danielle Lund, and I serve as Associate Director of Digital Engagement at the Alumni Association of Mount Holyoke. Our mission at the Alumni Association is to provide meaningful resources and opportunities for members of the Mount Holyoke community to connect. I want to share in that vein that we've just launched a new digital space called The Gates. I'm going to drop the link for it into the chat box right now. Uh, and this is a spot that has a career directory. Uh, alums can join affinity groups. You can post, post job opportunities and seek job opportunities. And there's a community discussion board. So we encourage everybody to take a peek at that space. So getting back to today's session, registered for the event are more than 100 alums and students ranging in class year from the 1950s up through the 2020s. So it's so great to be with you all today. If you feel comfortable doing so, you can go ahead and drop your name and class year or affinity to Mount Holyoke in the chat box. Um, we'd certainly love to see who's in attendance today. We're going to use the chat box for questions. So should any arise throughout the event, feel free to, to put them in the chat and we're going to address as many as we can at the close of the presentation. I want to remind that this session is being recorded and that no other recording is permitted. Uh, so without further ado, I'm excited to announce our, our pre presenter, Judy Weintraub, who's an alum of the class of 1980, an attorney, entrepreneur, author of two books, who's here to share with us uh, on how to write a book easily. So without further ado, Judy, I'm going to turn things over to you. Thank you so much, Danielle. Okay, can everybody see that? Yep. Great. Great. Well, I am so excited to be here with you today to have so many Mount Holyoke alums. And thank you so much for running this series. It's a great opportunity for people to learn things. The Gates program sounds very intriguing. I'm certainly going to look into that as well. So welcome to this webinar on writing a book easily. Now, I started my business in helping people publish books about eight, nine years ago, and I was really focused on business owners. So my expertise is more in helping people write nonfiction books. However, I also have helped people with some children's books and some novels. Um, and hopefully whatever type of book you're looking to write, you'll be able to uh, get some valuable tips from this webinar. But before we delve in, I would really like to find out where people are in the writing uh, journey. So if Danielle, you could put up the first poll, um, have you started your book yet? Or maybe you're just thinking about your book. Uh, if you could put yourself down for where you stand on this, uh, this spectrum, we'll get a sense for maybe where I should focus my um, uh, presentation. So far, it looks like we've got most people in the thinking stage or just starting, with a few people almost done or have completed. Okay, we'll run that for just another couple of seconds for those of you who might not have uh, put in your votes yet. And we'll go ahead and end that poll. And let's go to the second poll. What is the biggest issue you are experiencing in connection with your book? So folks are responding. We have about 80% of folks responding. So it's looking like the majority right now. I don't know where to start. I can't find the time to devote to writing my book. Okay, excellent. Well, that is wonderful because the bulk of the presentation will be right on those two topics. We'll cover a little bit on some of the others as well. So let me give you a little bit of background on me. Um, as Danielle said, I'm an attorney. I graduated from Mount Holyoke in 1980, went directly to law school, clerked for a federal judge, worked for a law firm in DC, went in-house counsel, and then went out on my own. About nine years ago, I was looking over all of the articles that I had published, the presentations that I had given, 
tried to figure out what I could do with this material that would be more valuable for me than just having it collect dust. And it occurred to me that I could write a book. Well, that didn't appeal to me all that much, but I thought I could write a series of short books that would be easier for me to get done. It would be faster. And I thought that would be of more interest to my target audience. So I went online to try to find a good platform that I could use and I couldn't find it. I thought, well, somebody else knows this. So I reached out to my network of several hundred people and asked them if they'd written a book and if so, what platform did they use and would they recommend it? I did not get anybody who wrote back and said that they knew a good resource. Instead, I got over 60 people telling me that if I found that resource to please share it with them because they would like to do the same thing. Well, I figured there's all these people self-publishing. I'll try that route. So I did. I wrote my first book. I went through the laborious process of self-publishing it. It was time consuming, it was frustrating. I made a ton of errors and mistakes, but eventually I got my book done, got it up on Amazon, sent it around to people and got some really good feedback. But I also got 22 people, 22 people who said, now that you figured it out, can you help me with my book? I actually did help 22 people get their books done and found that it was really enjoyable. I had such a great feeling of satisfaction when I was able to help them get their books done. And I also learned much, much smarter ways to get a book done than what I went through when I self-published my book. And that gave rise to my business, Skill Bites, that helps business owners and professionals, primarily, get their books written and published as easily and conveniently as possible. So we have all of the services that are needed from ghostwriting and editing and layout and cover and getting up on Amazon and marketing uh, that anybody might need to get their book done. So what I wanna to cover today, I'll start with why you might want to write a book and it sounds like many of you are at least thinking of writing a book, but there might be some advantages that you're not even aware of. Then we'll go into a five-step process for getting started so that you can identify a good topic for your book, carve out the time that you need to get your book done, and create a structure that will make it much easier for you to get your book done. We will look at some alternatives to writing your book and some options for getting your book done quickly. Then we'll look at eight post-manuscript steps that you'll need to at least be aware of because that will be instrumental in making your decision, is this the right thing for me to do? If you're not prepared to go through the post-manuscript steps, then perhaps it's not a good idea for you to start your book. We'll also look at three publishing options, the most popular options for publishing your book, and hopefully we'll have ample time for questions and answers. Next, I wanna go into a couple case studies of some of my clients. So this is Sarah. Sarah was an image consultant and a highly regarded speaker. She was chosen to speak at the Pennsylvania Convention for Women which hosts 8,000 people attending. And she was given the chance to sell her book at that convention. She didn't have a book. She had numerous people come up to her after her speech and asked if they could buy her book. But she had to turn them down because she didn't have one. She got invited to speak at another conference and the event planner told her that there was a sponsor willing to purchase 360 copies of her book to give out to the attendees. But she had to turn them down because she didn't have a book. She knew she needed to write a book, but she didn't know how to find the time to do it. And she wasn't really sure exactly what she should do. How does she get started? What topics should she pick? Well, Sarah came to one of my book writing workshops and she came out of that fired up to get her book done. 
she actually had a draft done in less than six weeks. Within four months after her draft was done, she had copies of her book in hand. She was able to get more speaking engagements. She got a TV interview, she got radio interviews, and she also sent her book to some of her prospects so that she could get more, um, generate more leads and get more customers, which she was able to do. But despite all those great things, Sarah told me that the biggest advantage and the biggest benefit to her from getting her book done was the sense of personal achievement that she got, the confidence it gave her, the sense of fulfilling a lifetime goal and the liberation of, of having her book done. Now, this is another one of my clients, Dr. John. John is a chiropractor who was noticing that more and more people were coming to him with headache, pain, and neck strain. So he wanted to write a book to help people who were suffering from these conditions to be able to feel much better. He wasn't sure how to get his book done, but he took one of my workshops and I worked with him. I provided some book coaching services for him as well as all of the services to get his book published. And he has had phenomenal results from his book. In the two years since his book come, has come out, he has identified over 40 new clients that have come to him directly related to his book, which he keeps track of because when a new client comes in the door, he asks them how they heard of him. And these 40 people were ones who answered, well, I got a copy of your book from a friend, or I heard that you wrote a book or something along those lines. Those 40 plus people will come out to over $60,000 of revenue for Dr. John. That far exceeds the $5,000 or so that he spent on getting his book done. So as Dr. John says, he no longer has to advertise patients find him. And many of those people who came to him, his new clients, weren't even people who suffered from headaches. Now, you might think that he has had to do a lot of marketing in order to get all those clients. Actually, he did almost no marketing. All he did was have free copies of his book available in his waiting room for anybody who wanted to take one. And he gave free copies to orthopedics in his area to give to their clients. He also put a copy of the front cover on his website. That's it. That's all he did. So hopefully by now you're really fired up to write your book and I'm going to go over some of the more, some additional benefits to you when you become a published author. You might think that it's a great source of passive income. You write the book and then people buy it and they pay you. But actually the revenue is not so great. So if anybody's really thinking that they're going to make a return on investment of writing their book from just the sales of the book, it's possible, but it's not real likely. The real return on investment, especially for business people, is from the enhanced credibility that you gain because people perceive book authors as experts. So think how well you'll be perceived when you've written your book. The visibility that you'll receive when your book is on Amazon, there are 5 million users coming to Amazon every single day looking to buy something. Now, they're not necessarily gonna find your book, but those people who are interested in the topic you're writing on, they'll find your book if they do a search on that topic or they go into the category that you're in. So you're greatly expanding your visibility by having a book on Amazon. And Google is very friendly with Amazon. When books are on Amazon, Google rates them more highly in searches on Google. You can get 
more leads. You can give books away like Dr. John and get more leads coming in that way or give your book away at conferences or whatever. Uh, it's a great way to build that know, like, and trust factor with your reader to develop that relationship with them so that they're more likely to purchase from you because they recognize that you appreciate their challenges and you have the expertise to help them. You can also use your book as a content marketing strategy. You can take things from your book and post them on social media. You can write blog posts. You can use it in different programs that you offer, and it can help you drive traffic to your website. There's also a great feeling of satisfaction knowing that you are helping other people. When you are writing a book that solves a problem that people are encountering, then when they read your book and they're able to take some steps to solve that problem, then you've really helped them. And then there's legacy. I think most people would like to know that they are leaving something valuable behind for others. So when you have written a book that encapsulates your expertise that others can then follow, you're creating something of lasting tangible value. And that's a really nice thing to feel. But as Sarah said, Mainly, there's also the personal value, the sense of accomplishment that you have. And there's the ability that you have gained by going through the discipline of writing this book, of articulating your message. You will be far better at communicating because you've written this book. Your staff will become much better at articulating your message. So writing a book for a business person is not just a bucket list item. It's actually an integral part of a 21st century business strategy. So in the rest of this presentation, I would like to devote to um, helping you figure out how you are going to write your book. So next is how do you get started? I'm going to take you through a five-step process that begins with identifying your business objective. Then you're going to look at who is the target audience or reader that you want for your book and what challenges they are confronted with. That will help you select the best topic that's going to be meaningful for your target audience and align with your business objectives. Then step four, developing a game plan so that you know when and where and how you're going to get your book written. And then finally, outlining your book so that you have a structure to keep you focused and get your book done. So we're going to go over each of these in turn. If your book is going to help you, then you need to know how you want it to help you. What is your overriding objective for writing your book? If you are in business, then you might want to generate more leads or get more revenue or get speaking engagements. There's lots of different things that you might have as your principal objective for writing a book. If you don't know what that objective is, then the chances are the book is not going to be as helpful for you as it might otherwise be. One of my clients, Frank, decided that he wanted to write a book to help him generate more consulting projects. His expertise was in helping franchisees be more successful. So he figured he would write a book on how to be more successful as a franchisee. Oh, in a coaching session with him, I asked him how likely it was that the franchisees would hire him to help them be more successful. And after giving it a little thought, he acknowledged that they're not really his target audience. They have spent a lot of money on buying a franchise and they don't have a lot left over for coaching services to be more successful but the franchisors 
do have a vested interest in having their franchisees be successful and they have the funds to be able to afford his coaching services. Can you see how it's a slightly different book to write a book for franchisors on how your franchisees can be more successful than writing the book for the franchisees? But if he hadn't identified his objective of getting more consulting assignments, he wouldn't have thought about whether the topic that he was doing, what he, what he was choosing, was going to align with that objective. So the next step after you've identified your objective is to think about how can the book help you achieve that objective? If, for example, you want to increase revenue from a particular service or product that you're offering, what can you do with the book that will help you increase that revenue? Well, you can send copies to people, either email the ebook or ship a copy of the paperback book. You can do guest appearances on podcasts or, um, or maybe do some blog posts, guest blog posts for other people whose audiences are the same as yours, which you'll have greater access to because you have the credibility of being a published author. So those bloggers and podcast folk will see you as an expert. Think also about what action you want the reader to take when they've completed your book. Do you want them to hire you for coaching? Do you want them to bring you in to speak or enroll in a, a course that you're offering? Uh, so when you've identified your objective, your action plan, and what actions you want the reader to take, your book is much more likely to enable you to achieve those objectives that you seek. And next, we have to look at who is your target audience. Your target audience is basically who you want to help you achieve that objective, whatever it is. If you're wanting more speaking engagements, then maybe your target audience is event planners. If you're looking to get more leads, then who are those people that are more likely to buy your services? Your target audience would be your target reader. Now, some people feel that if they write a general book that has a broad target audience, then their book is more likely to be successful. But it's maybe counterintuitive, the narrower your target audience, the more effective your book will be for that audience. So you wanna to try to think of who in particular would be the best audience for your book. One of my authors was a trademark attorney who wrote a general primer on trademark law. It wound up that he did not get the results that he was looking for because he hadn't identified those results before he wrote his book. After he wrote it, he figured out that what he should have done was written a book on how to deal with international infringement of a, of a trademark because that's what he most wanted clients to come to him for. So identifying your objective and then who you want to help you achieve that can help you determine what audience you want reading your book. And then you can look at what are the challenges that that audience faces that you can address in your book. That will help you decide what topic to write your book on, which comes next. Now, a lot of people start with this, such as Sean, starting with writing a book on trademark law when he hadn't really identified his objective or his target audience. And unfortunately, he got a book that didn't really help him very much. So you want to find something that, a topic that aligns with your target audience's needs and with the objective that you have for your business. Come up with a list of possible topics and then confirm interest in them to make sure that you're going to go with the topic that has the, the most potential for succeeding for you. How do you confirm interest? Well, 
There are a variety of ways you can do that, but one of the surprising tools that you can use is Amazon. Amazon is a great resource for market research. Look on Amazon for the other books that are along the same lines of what you're looking to write in the same topic and scroll down on the book detail page till you get to the section called product details. In that section, you can actually get a fair amount of interesting material. You'll see how many pages the book is. You'll see what categories the book is in. You'll see the ranking. Now the ranking shows how well the book is doing. A ranking of one means it's the best seller in that category. It is selling more than any other book. If you have a ranking that's one or 25 or 54, those are really good ranks because the chances are, especially in business management and leadership and motivation, that there are thousands of books in those categories, maybe even hundreds of thousands. And so these are doing really well, which means there's a lot of interest in that particular topic. If you find that most of the books have a very high rank, it might be that they're doing okay, but they're in the wrong category, but the chances are they're not doing as well. Now, you can also do other searches. You can look and see how many bloggers there are on your topic, how many podcasts, how many YouTube videos. Uh, you can do a Google keyword search to find out how many people are searching on your particular topic on a domestic level, an international level, um, whether it's a highly competitive topic. There's lots of information you can find with the Google keyword tool, which is free. And you can find that by just putting Google keyword tool in a Google browser and it'll come up with how you can find out how to use that tool. So that means you've now identified your objective, your target reader, their challenge, and a topic that is going to align with your target reader's needs, your objective, and has lots of interest. The next step is figuring out how are you going to get this book done? And that is step four in the process, developing a game plan. If you want to get your book done, then you ought to treat it like a project. Determine what your timetable is. For example, let's suppose you want to write a 100 page book and you want to have it written in six months. Figure that you'll need a good month or so to do the preliminary work, the market research on your topic and putting together an outline and things like that. That leaves five months to write 100 pages. If you are diligent about it, that comes out to 20 pages a month. 20 pages a month comes out to roughly five pages a week. How much time will it take you to write five pages? Maybe it'll take you two and a half hours. How do you fit two and a half hours into your currently very busy schedule? Well, you have to take a look at what are you doing that you don't need to be doing. Maybe you're spending an inordinate amount of time on Facebook or other social media channel, or maybe you're watching a lot of TV. Whatever you can try to carve time out of to make time for your book will help you get your book done. Or maybe there are some things that you're doing that you can delegate to somebody else. Perhaps you have somebody on your staff, or if not, maybe you have um, a, you can hire an intern, or you can hire a virtual assistant, or you can have a family member do for you. Perhaps you could have your spouse cook dinner for you occasionally, or your kids do laundry occasionally, whatever you can do to free up some of your time. And the interesting thing is that when you do teach your spouse or children to do certain things for you, they'll continue doing them after your book is done. So you'll have more time then as well. 
You just got to make sure up front that you give them sufficient training and check in with them every now and then, because if something goes awry, that might wind up taking more of your time to get it resolved. Then once you've figured out how to get two and a half hours out of your week or whatever it turns out to be, you want to put it on your calendar. When can you write and for how much time? Is that going to be a half an hour, five times a week, or maybe one and a half hours on the weekend and one hour during the week? However, it's going to fit in. And what time of the day is going to work best for you? A lot of my authors prefer first thing in the morning before the day gets busy, because once it gets busy, it's very easy to just postpone that writing time and then not get to it. Some of the other people in my audience prefer late at night. Personally, I don't have very good creative powers late at night, so that would not work for me, but it works for them. So come up with something that will work in your schedule. And then the other thing I wanna suggest is finding an accountability buddy. Somebody that can contact you on a weekly basis to say, are you on track? Because you're going to be more likely to stay on track if you know that somebody is going to be asking you about that and pushing you if you have postponed or not done what you had set out to do. So next, we're going to look at outlining your book. Most of my authors find it much easier to write their book from an outline. It will focus you in on exactly the topic or subtopic that you want to get done on a particular day. It starts with doing a brain dump of everything that you think you want to include in your book. And that can take a couple days to do. You don't have to do it in one sitting but you can. And I recommend that you do it on sticky notes or index cards because after you've done the brain dump, you're going to want to rearrange those ideas into major categories and the subtopics for those categories. One of my authors, for instance, wrote a book on um, how to ace your job interview. Well, there's lots of topics that could be included in that book maybe on what types of companies do you want to apply for, how to write a resume, what questions should you anticipate in the interview, what questions should you ask in the interview. So after coming up with a list of all of the different topics you might want to include, you can collate those into the major topics and those will become your chapters. Then the subtopics are what you want to address in that chapter. While you're doing your outline, try to put yourself in the shoes of your target reader. What questions would they have? What problems might they encounter? How do you help them solve their problem? If they were a client, what steps would you take them through? And that will also help you come up with topics to include in your outline. You also want to take a look at any materials that you've already developed on your topic. Have you published any articles on it or given any presentations? Or maybe you've written blog posts or taken some videos, done some YouTube videos. Put in the outline the reference to whatever the material is that deals with the particular topic so that when you get to that point, it'll be a lot easier for you to get that section done because you can repurpose material that you have already created. Now your outline will change as you're writing. You might find that certain things need to get rearranged or added, or there may even be some things that you don't think really do belong in this book, which is fine. You want to make sure that you save those ideas just in case a later book would be more suitable for those ideas. So you don't want to get rid of them, but you don't want to treat it as if the outline is written in stone. It's a dynamic document and should be treated like that. 
But when you have that outline, it really helps you to focus on just the little bit that is in front of you. And when you know roughly how long each section will be, it will be much easier and much less overwhelming for you to get your book written. And note that you don't even have to go in order. If, for example, you have a client who comes to you with a question that is per perhaps pertaining to something in chapter five, and you help them with that problem, you can write that part up. Even if you haven't written any of the rest of chapter five or even chapters three or four yet. And then when, it, when you are done with the book, you can make sure that you have proper transitions in place so that that, that section flows well. But get it done when you're thinking about it. Don't, you don't have to go in order. Now we're gonna go into some options that you can take. Even if you are not a good writer, you can get a book done with some of these options. The first one is to use a ghostwriter. There are a number of people who think of ghostwriters as kind of like cheating. It's not your book if somebody else has written it. But I want to dissuade you of that because it's very widely accepted to use ghostwriters. Celebrities use ghostwriters, even top-notch writers, authors, best-selling authors use ghostwriters for their books. When you're using a ghostwriter, that ghostwriter is going to help you get the content out of your head and out of the material you've already done and put it into a book. It is still your expertise. What you are deciding when you're hiring a ghostwriter is that your time is more valuable and better spent doing something besides the writing of the book. It will be your book, you will own the copyright, it will be your name on the cover, and you can be very proud of it. In addition, you're probably gonna get a better quality book out of it because a professional ghostwriter does this for a living and so is able to write really well. Now, if you're going to use a ghostwriter, you're gonna have to be prepared to spend a lot more money than if you wrote the book yourself. Also, you need to be careful and make sure that you're hiring the right ghostwriter. So you want to do interviews and make sure there's a good fit, that the ghostwriter has some experience writing books in the genre and on the topic that you want your book on and that the ghostwriter likes that topic. Otherwise, you're not as likely to get as good of a book. You want to make sure that it's well understood what you want the ghostwriter to do. Are they gonna do some market research or other research on your topic? Or is it just that they're going to take materials that you've prepared and do some interviews of you to get the content out of your head? What length book are you looking for? Lots of different issues that you want to address in a contract with a ghostwriter. The second option here is called speaking your book. This is a great option for people who are not particularly good at writing, but very good at speaking. Here, what I recommend is that you take your outline and you basically frame each of the topics and subtopics as a question. And then you can record yourself answering those questions. You can take the recording and convert it into text and then work from the text. You can write your book from the recording itself. You listen to the recording and you work from that. Or you can even take the recording and give it to a ghostwriter or the converted text and give it to a ghostwriter to work from that. Another idea that I wanna suggest to you, if you're going to use this option, have somebody in your target audience ask you the questions because it may be that they don't fully understand an answer that you are providing and they can ask a follow-up question, which you might never have thought of because you know the material so well, it wouldn't have occurred to you that that was an issue. That way you're gonna get a much better, more robust 
book out of it when you know that you're fully addressing your target readers needs and questions. The third option is called staging your content. And this basically uses your outline where you will write up or speak one little bit at a time, say somewhere in the 300 to 500 word range. And then you'll get that bit out there, whether you post it in a blog or you publish an article or a guest blog post, or maybe you have a group coaching program that you can introduce the idea in that program. But when you get it out there, you can get feedback on it and make sure that your audience <clears throat> is going to understand what you're writing about. And just as with the outline, it can make the whole process much less overwhelming when you know that you're just doing a little bit at a time. Now, the fourth option here is not really an option because I highly recommend to everybody that you have a professional editor review your book. If you want that book to enhance your credibility, it's got to be a good book. And even the best writers will have errors in their book. Not to say that an editor is going to find everything, but it will most likely substantially improve your book if you have a professional editor review it. The point here isn't that you, you have that option of hiring an editor, it's that you should not be a perfectionist going over your own work over and over and over again. If you're gonna have an editor do it, get the content down and then pass it off to the editor to do the polishing. You can then get it back from the editor and you can review it and make some tweaks. But if you spend all your time going over content that you've already written, it will take you significantly longer to get your book done. So know that you're gonna use an editor and rely on the editor to do that work for you. Now I wanna give you an overview of the various steps that you're gonna to need to take after your manuscript is written. I'm gonna go through these really, really quickly. I do, by the way, have two online courses, one that goes through all those steps for writing your book and a lot more, and one that goes through these post manuscript steps in a lot more detail than I can do right now. Uh, and those are available on my website at skillbytes.net. I mentioned already hiring an editor. You might also want to have your book proofread or one or a couple of my authors choose just to have the proofreading done. ISBNs and barcode are not critical if you're gonna sell your book from your own website, but you do have to have them if you're gonna sell them from places like Amazon or barnesandnoble.com or in bookstores or whatever. Now, Amazon does have free ISBNs, um, but they're not gonna be good if you want to get your book on any other platform or in bookstores. A Library of Congress control number, that's L the LCCN is totally optional. That's not required by anybody, but it's kind of neat to know that you've got one uh, and it's free. Testimonials and reviews, well, a lot of people want to see whether you have reviews on your book and what they say before they buy your book. So while they're not critical, they are desired. And if you get a lot of reviews, then your book is going to show up better in searches on your topic. Layout design and cover design, if your book doesn't look great, then it's not gonna reflect well on you and fewer people are going to buy it if, for instance, the cover doesn't look good. So I highly recommend having a professional layout designer and cover designer. Also, when you hire somebody to do your cover, it should be somebody who's fully familiar with designing book covers because graphic artists might have a lot of ability, but if they don't understand the specifications for book covers, then the chances are when you upload 
your files to Amazon, you're going to run into problems. So if you want to avoid them, those problems, then hire a cover designer, not just a graphic artist. If you want an ebook, you're going to need special formatting for publication. Um, getting on Amazon is free, but there's a lot of ways to do it wrong. And so I recommend using somebody who knows the ropes to get your book on Amazon and on other sites. And marketing is critical. If you want people to know about your book, you're going to have to do some promotion of your book. That can be very time consuming. And if you're not skilled at marketing, then you need to make sure that you have a budget to hire somebody else to do the marketing for you. Very quickly, the three most popular uh, publishing options are traditional publishing, self-publishing, and assisted publishing. With a traditional publisher, you're probably going to need to get a literary agent because most traditional publishers don't accept unsolicited manuscripts. Literary agents work predominantly on commission, usually 15% of whatever you're going to make from your book. And so they're not going to work unless they have a reasonably good assurance that a traditional publisher is going to be interested in your book. There are three main criteria that traditional publishers are interested in. The quality of your book, the size of your network, and your ability to market your book yourself. So the literary agent is going to require a detailed 30 plus page proposal outlining each of those three criteria. If you're gonna go that route, know that it's going to take quite a bit longer for your book to come out. It might take you months to get a literary agent and then more months to get a publisher. And then once you have the publisher, it could be a year to a year and a half before your book comes out. So if you don't wanna wait two or two and a half years for your book, then you need to go to one of the other options. Now with self-publishing, you'll have to do all the legwork yourself, figuring out who to hire for your editor, your layout designer, your cover designer, um, getting your book on Amazon, et cetera. So it's gonna take more of your time, but you can get your book out a lot quicker. However, if you make mistakes in who you're hiring or uploading your book or whatever, you might not get the results you're seeking. The quality might not be as good as it would be if you use the right people. Assisted publishing gives you that assurance that you're gonna get better quality and it'll get done a lot faster than traditional publishing. The one thing you need to watch out for with assisted publishing is choosing the right assisted publisher. I have had several clients come to me because Either their assisted publishers did not do a real good job for them, or in certain cases, the assisted publisher went bankrupt and they had a devil of a time getting their files out of that assisted publisher and over to me to finish the job. So it can be very frustrating to go through the self-publishing. It can be very time consuming. But if you want to make it a lot easier for yourself, then use an assisted publisher. So a very brief summary, we looked at a variety of benefits of being a published author. We went through a five-step process to get started with your books so that you know how to get the right topic that's going to align with the needs of your target reader and your objectives how you can carve out the time to write your book and how you can create an outline to make it easier for you to write your book. We looked at four different writing options, hiring a ghostwriter, speaking your book, staging your content, and not being a perfectionist, but relying on an editor to polish your book for you. We looked at the eight post-manuscript steps and we looked at three different publishing options. So that's a lot of material to cover in a very short period of time. And I suspect that some of you might be a bit overwhelmed. 
so I want to offer you a complimentary consultation where I can help you with whatever the issue is that you are facing right now. Whether it's figuring out your game plan or your topic or whatever. And Danielle's putting in the chat the link to sign up for a consultation with me, or you can just put in the link that you would like one and I will follow up with you if you give me your contact information. Awesome, Judy, thanks so much. You're uh, welcome. I see we have some questions flowing in already. Um, and would encourage folks, if you have questions, go ahead and drop them in the chat. I see some have come through the Q&A feature as well. So uh, I'm gonna share some of those right now, if that sounds good to you, Judy. That does. And uh, I can go a little bit beyond our 1230 Eastern time frame if, uh, if anybody wants to stay on, or if I don't get to your question, feel free to email it to me and I'll get back to you. My email is judy, J-U-D-Y, at skillbytes.net, S-K-I-L-L-B-I-T-E-S.net. All right, so that's in the chat now too. Um, so a couple of questions coming in around um, costs. So imagining that ghostwriting fees range widely, any ballpark on how much this would cost? Is it usually a flat fee? It depends a lot. I mean, there's a number of different variables that have to go into the ghostwriting fee. But the questioner is absolutely right. It does vary considerably. I have used inexpensive ghostwriters and found that their work is really not very good. So I don't use them anymore. Um, but nor do I use the ones that are $50,000 and up. Um, it depends a lot on how clear your concept is for your book, how much research the ghostwriter needs to do, how much material you already have on that topic that the ghostwriter can use, how available you are for the interviews, um, so if you're looking to write something in the 100, 120 page range and you've got some material already and there's no market research, you can figure that that's going to be somewhere in the fifteen dollars to $20,000 range if you use one of my ghostwriters. You can find other ghostwriters that are less. Hopefully you can find a good one. You can certainly find ghostwriters who are a lot more than that. Um, thank you so much. And then sort of in the same vein, um, for an editor, ap approximately, approximate cost for editing and how do they typically bill? Right. Um, some editors charge by the hour. My editors charge by the word because I don't know how many words they're going to get done in an hour. Um, and then I can give you a fixed price depending on the, the word count in your document. Um, I have seen editors as cheap as a penny a word. I generally don't use them either because I haven't found the ones that I've looked at to be very good. And then there's others that are upwards of five cents a word. There's also different types of editing. There's doing a copy edit or grammatical edit, and there's doing a developmental edit. The developmental edit is going to cost considerably more because the editor is looking a lot closer at the document for the flow of the text and what might be missing and things like that, whereas the grammatical or copy editor is looking predominantly for grammar errors, and typos, and punctuation, and citation, you know, references being correct, and things like that. So for ebooks used mainly for content marketing and perhaps a tiny source of income, um, in one case to market a nutritional supplement consulting coaching services, what length do you recommend? Well, um, that depends on your objective. If your objective is to get something out quickly, that will help establish your expertise in a particular subject, you don't necessarily need anything particularly long. So it could be 50, 60, 70 pages. Or I have one author who's written 20, 25 page books. If you're looking to get speaking engagements, however, event planners 
much prefer books that are longer, preferably in the 120-ish page range, because those books are wide enough to have text on the spine, which makes your book look more like a book than a pamphlet. Um, so it sort of depends on the amount of information you have and what your objectives are for your book. If you're basically giving your book out for free and you're not looking to get um, paid speaking engagements from it, then short books are much quicker to get done and they're a lot easier for your target reader to read. In fact, that's why I named my company Skill Bites based on sound bites because they, my initial focus was on short books, but now I do books of any, of any length. Can you share a little bit what you mean by assist, the assisted publishing process? Is that consulting with somebody like you? Like, can you dive into that a little bit more? Sure. When you are using an assisted publisher like Skill Bites, then you can decide what it is you want Skill Bites to do for you, and we do it. It's basically outsourcing the, the publishing services. It could include everything from getting a ghostwriter for you, providing book coaching services, helping you develop your outline, um, having an editor edit your book for you, a layout designer design the layout, a cover designer, the formatting, uploading onto Amazon. So you don't have to do that and you don't have to find all these separate people. You just come to Skill Bites and we can do all those things for you including the marketing, if you're looking for marketing services as well. And you will pay a fee to pay based on the services that you want. If you know somebody who's a good editor, you don't have to have editing from Skill Bites. You can get the other services. So you're just ordering the services that are going to be of, of most value to you. Um, and would your sense be that fiction or memoir writing would follow a similar publishing process to what was described today? Yes, yep. You would definitely wanna go through those same eight post manuscript steps for a memoir or a novel as you would for nonfiction um, business book. Mm -hmm. um, and then any uh, specific insights on the printing of the book, um, if you're aiming to, to have print. Sure. If your book is in black and white, the least expensive printing that you can have done is actually by Amazon. They have a pretty decent quality for black and white, but I would not recommend using Amazon if your book has color in it because their color process at least in my experience, has not been great. I use a different printer called Ingram for my clients who have books in color. And you have different options. You have the, for my, my authors who have had color children's books, I go with the highest option, the, the one that has the um, thicker paper and the highest quality ink to be, being used by the, the uh, printers. Uh, for those books um, because they come out looking so much sharper than anything that Amazon could do. Uh, so you can pick different paper weight and, um, and different quality of the printing through Ingram. Whereas on Amazon, there's really just the one option. And so I don't even do my color books on Amazon. I just go directly to Ingram for that. You can also find other printers. Um, Ingram does take a fair amount of time to get your books and they're not the cheapest out there, but they have very good quality. Um, and sort of in that vein of uh, putting, sort of assembling the book, what can you use stock photos in a book? And if so, can, can you just get them off a website? You have to be careful when you're using stock photos that you have the right to use them. If, if it says that it's um, available for any use, then you wanna make sure that you take a screenshot of that 
um, just in case somebody later comes back and says you infringed my copyright by using that. You can you have your screenshot of the site that you went to that says that it's available for any use. Um, there's sometimes where it says not available for commercial use and a book would be considered commercial use. Uh, so you have to be careful to make sure that you have the right to, to be able to put the image in the book. Thank you. Um, any specific thoughts on getting started with a memoir? Um, the question that came in specifically was asking about writing about parents in World War, in, in World War II experiences. Is there, do you know a market for any such uh, type of book like that? Yeah, actually I did one for one of my clients wrote one on his experience. He, um, he was a baby in Poland. His parents put him up for adoption with a Catholic family because his parents were Jewish and indeed they were killed within 30 days or so after they put their son up for adoption. But then his uncle came back and reclaimed him after World War II. And so he, he wrote a book about that. Um, but there are publishers who uh, focus on World War II books. So uh, you can do searches online for those publishers. Thank you. And then I think this is a good question to close with for um, today. What is the most satisfying aspect um, of your Skill Bites organization for you? Ah, I love when my clients get their books in hand. It's, it's thrilling to me to experience the excitement that they feel when they're able to open the box and pull out their printed copies of their books. That's awesome. Awesome. Um, Judy, thank you so much for being with us today, for sharing this presentation uh, and all the, the resources um, that were a part of it. I'm going to drop a couple of, of things in the chat. I had shared previously the link where you'll be eventually be able to find the recording to this presentation. I also wanted to share, we recently did a post on um, alum authors. So if folks want to take a look at some of the, the published work of Mount Holyoke alums. I'm putting the link for that in the chat. Ah, um, great. And again, I'll just drop in there uh, where you can find our upcoming events and our past event recordings. That's via this link right here. But thanks so much for everybody being here today for your great questions, comments. We'll, we'll look forward to having you all join at future events. And Judy, thank you again. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks everybody for, for coming.